Epstein's anomaly is a congenital defect where your right ventricle is atrialized because the tricuspid valve is displaced apically. Most of the time, it's going to be the septal tricuspid leaflet. The criteria for how far the tricuspid valve leaflet is displaced, and we're comparing it to the mitral annulus. If the diameter between the two leaflets or the annuli are greater than 10 millimeters or 1 centimeter, this could count for Epstein's anomaly. The problem with this is because the right ventricle has become atrialized, these patients can develop heart failure quickly. Because although the right ventricle is not designed to function like the left ventricle, it's definitely not supposed to function like an atria. So if it's atrialized, they probably will need to have some sort of surgery before they go into heart failure. It's crazy too, because sometimes I've scanned people with repaired Epstein's anomaly. Typically what they'll do is they'll just put in a new tricuspid valve. And when I scan these patients, the right ventricle is so big, it's completely almost compressed in the left ventricle. A lot of things that they like to ask are the types of EKG like tracings you would see associated with Epstein's. And the first is Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. This is the classic tracing of Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. This right here is the typical normal EKG where you're gonna have a narrow QRS, you have a P, and then your T wave. Both Parkinson White is going to have your normal P wave, but then you're gonna have a delta wave. Your delta wave will substitute your Q wave. So in the normal EKG, you have a P wave, and then it dips down for a Q, and then goes up for an R, comes down for an S. But for Wolf Parkinson White, you have a P wave, and then momentarily after that, you're gonna jump up on a slope, or it'll slope up, and form the QRS. So that's a delta wave. Here's another EKG of Wolf Parkinson White syndrome where we have the distinctive delta wave right here. Epstein's anomaly is also associated with supraventricular tachycardia or SVT where the atria and ventricular beats are at least 120 beats or greater. And then regarding older patients who have Epstein's anomaly, they are at great risk of having or developing atrial fibrillation where you're going to have this irregularly irregular R to R interval without any P waves. And then let me just show you some pictures. So right here you can see in this image the tricuspid leaflets clear up here or clear down there in the apex of the right ventricle and the whole thing is atrialized. And here, these are really good pictures. Just in case they show an image like this and they have arrows pointing up at the apex, this could be one of two things. It could either be the moderator band or the tricuspid leaflets. Normally your tricuspid valve should be route right here, but now it's displaced into the right ventricle, which is why the right ventricle has become atrialized. So right here, the arrow here is pointing to the start of the tricuspid regurgitation. In these images here, you can clearly see that the distance between the septal leaflet are greater than 10 millimeters or one centimeter. Here's another example. This is another picture of Epstein's. You can see this is the mitral and the tricuspid valve is clear up here. This is pointing to the tricuspid valve. Uh, be ready for questions like this, especially like EKG stuff on your boards. And then if you were to look at the x-ray of a patient with Epstein's anomaly, it would probably look like this, where the heart almost looks like it's box-shaped. 